I would like to share this dream with you, church, and I had this dream last night. And the dream has too many numbers in it for me not to pay attention to the dream. In the dream, I'm standing on top of a mountain with Moses. I cannot see his face because his face is covered up. He gives me the number 40, and he says, The number is my number to do with as I please. I said, Sir, what does the number 40 mean to me? He said, Go your way. 40 is your number, nevertheless. So I go my way, and I'm climbing down the mountain. And once I climb down the mountain, I'm walking. And as I'm walking, I see this girl going up being lifted up in the air and on the bottom of both of her shoes is the number nine written and I say I say to myself I'm afraid of that number nine I have to call brother Preston that number nine means something to him that number nine means something to brother Preston and I'm walking and I see my sister Joyce, and she is crying for me to help her. And I see this woman almost as if she is mummified. She is all covered in cloth, and she has no face. She has two arms holding on to my sister Joyce and shaking her side to side. And she has five arms above her head waving in the air. And in the dream, I say out loud, there are six things the Lord hates, but seven is an abomination to the Lord. And I help my sister, I pray for her, for her to be set free from that bondage. And I see a table, and the table is full of coins and the coins keep falling on the floor, and I'm trying to pick them up, but I'm weary of picking up these coins. So I say to those that are watching the coins on the table, I said, I'm going to cast these coins in the street. They're of no value to me. I am leaving. They are no value to me. They mean nothing to me. So I overturn the table. And the coins are running out into the streets, and I am walking. And as I am walking, I see a lot of people on the road walking with me, and everyone has received a number. And I'm asking everyone, what is your number? And some have the number seven. Some have the number three. And they want to know what my number is. And I said, my number is three. I wanted the number seven, but for some reason, I did not receive the number seven, but the number three. So they said that the number three was mine. And someone on the road said to me, maybe that's the order that we will be taking in. The threes will go first. I said, I do not know what the numbers mean. I don't know if it means that. So we come up to the door, and the door is shut. And I says, oh, no, what are we waiting for? The door should have been opened by now. Someone says, no, we are waiting for the doomsday clock to strike 12. It has to be on 12. And I said, this is the midnight hour. This is 12 o'clock. Haven't I made myself perfectly clear our time here is up. I see my mother behind me, and my mother has been passed away since 1983. I see her giving a woman money, and I hear her telling the woman, you will be left behind. Here's everything that you need to survive. And the woman says, why do I have to be left behind? Why can't we all go together at the same time? And I hear my mother telling the woman, those that are left behind will need answers. Someone has to answer. And the woman said, you're right. So not everyone will be taken. Many will be left behind. But I have my number three, 
and I'm looking for the door to open. And then there's a man walking in the line and he, he wants to see our number. And then he looks at me and he said, you can go. I see the seal upon your forehead. I said, you're looking for a seal? I thought we were going to go. We've already been sealed. I've been sealed a long time ago. I have my number. Now open up that door because I want in. I've been waiting a long time. When would the door open? He said, when you see the 12, when you hear the clock strike 12 times, that door will open. And you will all go in at the same time. And then I see my brother, Donnie. And Donnie's on the road. And he's been passed since 2004. He's been gone home a long time. And Donnie is walking with people that are singing a song. And he says to me, do you feel anything in your spirit about these people that are singing this song? Do you feel anything spiritually? I said, get rid of them. Get away from them. They are singing a song. And he said, do you know the song? And I said, yes, I know the song. He said, who do I get rid of? Everyone that is singing that song. He said, is it the song of the redeemed? I said, no, it is not the song of the redeemed. Get away from them. And then I turn on the road to the right. And then I see the 144,000, and I said, what? There's the redeemed to the right of us. There's the 144,000 singing the song. And then in the dream, I hear the clock striking 12 times, and the door opens immediately, and we are going inside of the door and I hear the song of the redeemed and I don't know to go through the door or to join the redeemed singing the song of the redeemed but I feel the pull of what's inside of the door pulling me in but I feel the pull of to join the 144,000 of the redeemed of the Lord singing the song. And I wake up and I think, oh Lord, I love the song of the redeemed, but I don't want to be left behind with 144,000. I want to go through the door when the door is open. And I, I called Brother Preston to share the dream with him and he said, oh, pray for us. We're getting ready to get on a plane and fly to El Salvador and uh, stay past New Year's to uh, visit some family and friends. He said, pray for us after you've had that dream. That dream means something. He said, I'm so sorry I can't talk with you because I'm getting ready to leave. I said, oh, Brother Preston, I pray for you. I pray for you. What the Holy Spirit reveals to you about this dream, oh, church, it was so real. The dream was so real. God bless you, my dear, dear, precious friends. In Jesus Christ's most holy name, we pray and let the church say amen and amen.